Hi there. Sorry I'm late. Good afternoon, thank you for coming. Yesterday I gave a full account to the Prime Minister of my actions between the 27th of March and the 14th of April, what I thought and did. And he has asked me to repeat that account directly to you. I know that millions of people in this country have been suffering. Thousands have died. Many are angry about what they've seen in the media about my actions. I want to clear up the confusions and misunderstandings that I can. In retrospect, I should have made this statement earlier. It's many years since I've said anything on television, but I will do my best to answer questions after I've explained what happened. I also should clarify that I'm not here to speak on behalf of the government or the Prime Minister. I'm explaining my own actions and my own thinking. The Prime Minister is giving a press conference later and he will answer questions concerning government policy. Around midnight on Thursday the 26th of March, I spoke to the Prime Minister. He told me that he tested positive for COVID. We discussed the national emergency, arrangements for number 10 given his isolation, and what I would do in number 10 the next day. The next morning I went to work as usual. I was in a succession of meetings about this emergency. I suddenly got a call from my wife who was at home looking after our four-year-old child. She told me she suddenly felt badly ill, she had vomited and felt like she might pass out and there would be nobody to look after our child. None of our usual childcare options were available. They were alone in the house. After very briefly telling some officials in number 10 what had happened, I immediately left the building, ran to a car and drove home. This was reported by the media at the time who saw me run out of number 10. After a couple of hours, my wife felt a bit better. There were many critical things at work and she urged me to return in the afternoon. And I did. That, after, that evening, I returned home and discussed the situation with my wife. She was ill. She might have COVID, though she did not have a cough or a fever. At this point, most of those who I work with most closely, including the Prime Minister himself, and others who sit within 15 feet of me every day, either had had symptoms and had returned to work or were absent with symptoms. I thought there was a distinct probability that I had already caught the disease. I had a few conflicting thoughts in my mind. First, I was worried that if my wife and I were both seriously ill, possibly hospitalised, there was nobody in London that we could reasonably ask to look after our child and expose themselves to COVID. My wife had felt on the edge of not being able to look after him safely a few hours earlier. I was thinking, what if the same or worse happens to me? There's nobody here that I can reasonably ask to help. The regulations made clear, I believe, that risks to the health of a small child were an exceptional situation and I had a way of dealing with this that minimised risk to others. Second, I thought that if I did not develop symptoms, then I might be able to return to work to help deal with the crisis. There were ongoing discussions about testing government staff in order to keep people like me working rather than isolating. At this point, on the Friday, advisors such as myself had not been included in the list of who, of who were tested but it was possible that this might change the following week. Therefore, I thought that after testing negative, I could continue working. In fact, this did not change and special advisors were not tested and I have never been tested. Third, there have been numerous false stories in the media about my actions and statements regarding COVID. In particular, there were stories suggesting that I had opposed lockdown and even that I did not care about many deaths. For years I have warned of the dangers of pandemics. Last year I wrote about the possible threat of coronaviruses and the urgent need for planning. The truth is that I had argued for lockdown, I did not oppose it. But these stories had created a very bad atmosphere around my home. I was subject to threats of violence, people came to my house shouting threats, there were posts on social media encouraging attacks, there were many media reports on TV showing pictures of my house. I was also worried that given the severity of this emergency, this situation would get worse. And I was worried about the possibility of leaving my wife and child at home all day and often into the night while I worked in number 10. I thought the best thing to do in all the circumstances was to drive to an isolated cottage on my father's farm. At this farm, my parents live in one house, my sister and her two children live in another house, 
and there was a separate cottage roughly 50 metres away from either of them. My tentative conclusion on the Friday evening was this. If we are both unable to look after our child, then my sister or nieces can look after him. My nieces are 17 and 20. They're old enough to look after him, but also young enough to be in the safest category. And they had extremely kindly volunteered to do so if needed. But, I thought, if I do not develop symptoms and there's a testing regime in place at work, I could return to work if I tested negative. In that situation, I could leave my wife and child behind in a safe place. Safe in the form of support from family for shopping and emergencies, safe in the sense of being away from our home which had become a target, and also safe for, for everybody else because they were completely isolated on a farm and could not infect anybody. Contrary to some media reports, there are no neighbours in the normal sense of the word. The nearest other homes are roughly half a mile away. So in this scenario, I thought that they could stay there for a few weeks, I could go back to work, help colleagues, and everybody, including the general public, would be safe. I did not ask the Prime Minister about this decision. He was ill himself and he had huge problems to deal with. Every day I have to exercise my judgement about things like this and decide what to discuss with him. I thought that I would speak to him when the situation clarified over coming days, including whether I had symptoms and whether there were tests available. Arguably this was a mistake and I understand that some will say that I should have spoken to the Prime Minister before deciding what to do. So I drove the three of us up to Durham that night, arriving roughly at midnight. I did not stop on the way. When I woke the next morning, Saturday the 28th of March, I was in pain and clearly had COVID symptoms, including a bad headache and a serious fever. Clearly I could not return to work anytime soon. For a day or two we were both ill. I was in bed, my wife was ill, but not ill enough that she needed emergency help. I got worse, she got better. During the night of Thursday the 2nd of April, my child woke up. He threw up and had a bad fever. He was very distressed. We took medical advice, which was to call 999. An ambulance was sent. They assessed my child and said he must go to hospital. I could barely stand up. My wife went with him in the ambulance. I stayed at home. He stayed the night in the hospital. In the morning, my wife called to say that he had recovered, seemed back to normal. Doctors had tested him for COVID and said that they should return home. There were no taxis. There were no taxis. I drove to the hospital, picked him up, then returned home. I did not leave the car or have any contact with anybody at any point on this short trip. The hospital's, I don't know what, roughly five miles or something away, two miles, three miles, four miles, something like that. A few days later, the hospital said that he tested negative. After I started to recover, one day in the second week, I tried to walk outside the house. At one point, the three of us walked into woods owned by my father next to the cottage that I was staying in. Some people saw us in these woods from a distance, but we had no interaction with them. We had not left the property. We were on private land. By Saturday the 11th of April, I was still feeling weak and exhausted, but other than that, I had no COVID symptoms. I thought that I would be able to return to work the following week, possibly part time. It was obvious that the situation was extremely serious. The Prime Minister had been gravely ill, colleagues were dealing with huge problems, and many were ill or isolating. I felt like I ought to return to work if possible, given I was now recovering, in order to relieve the intense strain at number 10. On the Saturday, I sought, that Saturday, I sought expert medical advice. I explained our family's symptoms and all the timings, and I asked if it was safe to return to work on Monday, Tuesday, seek childcare, and so on. I was told that it was safe and I could return to work and seek childcare. On Sunday the 12th of April, 15 days after I, had first, after I had first displayed symptoms, I decided to return to work. My wife was very worried, particularly given my eyesight had seemed to, seemed to have been affected by the disease. She did not want to risk a nearly 300 mile drive with our child, given how ill I had been. We agreed that we should go for a short drive to see if I could drive safely. We drove for roughly half an hour and ended up on the outskirts of Barnard Castle town. We did not visit the castle, we did not walk around the town. We parked by a river. My wife and I discussed the situation. We agreed that I could drive safely, we should turn around and go home. I felt a bit sick. We walked about 10 to 15 metres from the car to the, to the riverbank nearby. We sat there for about 15 minutes. 
We had no interactions with anybody. I felt better. We returned to the car. An elderly gentleman walking nearby appeared to recognise me. My wife wished him happy Easter from a distance, but we had no other interaction. We headed home. On the way home, our child needed the toilet. He was in the back seat of the car. We pulled over to the side of the road. My wife and child jumped out into the woods by the side of the road. They were briefly outside. I briefly joined them. They played for a little bit, and then, and, and then I got out of the car, um, went outside. We were briefly in the woods. We saw some people at a distance, but at no point did we break any social distancing rules. We then got back in the car and went home. We agreed that if I continued to improve, then the next day we should return to London and I, and I would go back to work. We returned to London on the evening of Monday the 13th of April, Easter Monday. I went back to work in number 10 the next morning. At no point between arriving and leaving Durham did any of the three of us enter my parents' house or my sister's house. Our only exchanges were shouted conversations at a distance. My sister shopped for us and left everything outside. In the last few days, there have been many media reports that I returned to Durham after the 13th of April. All these stories are false. There is a particular report that I returned there on the 19th of April. Photos and data on my phone prove this to be false. And local CCTV, if it exists, would also prove that I'm telling the truth that I was in London on that day. I was not in Durham. During this two week period, my, brother's, my mother's brother died with COVID. There are media reports that this had some influence on my behavior. These reports are false. This private matter did not affect my movements. None of us saw him, none of us attended his funeral. In this very complex situation, I tried to exercise my judgment the best I could. I believe that in all the circumstances, I behaved reasonably and legally, balancing the safety of my family and the extreme situation in number 10 and the public interest in effective government to which I could contribute. I was involved in decisions affecting millions of people and I thought that I should try to help as much as I could do. I can understand that some people will argue that I should have stayed at my home in London throughout. I understand these views. I know the intense hardship and sacrifice that the entire country has had to go through. However, I respectfully disagree. The legal rules inevitably do not cover all circumstances, including those that I found myself in. I thought, and I think today, that the rules, including those regarding small children and extreme circumstances, allowed me to exercise my judgment about the situation I found myself in, including the way that my London home had become a target, and all the complexity of the situation. I accept, of course, that there is room for reasonable disagreement about this. I can also understand some people think I should not have driven at all anywhere, but I had taken med expert medical advice. It was 15 days after symptoms. I had been told that I could return to work and employ childcare. I think it was reasonable and sensible to make a short journey before embarking on a five hour drive to see whether I was in a fit state to do this. The alternative was to stay in Durham rather than going back to work and contributing to the government's efforts. I believe I made the right judgment, though I can understand that others may disagree with that. I've explained all of the above to the Prime Minister. At some point during the first week when we were both sick and in bed, I mentioned to him what I had done. Unsurprisingly, given the condition we were in, neither of us remember the conversation in any detail. I did not, I did not make my movements public at the time. Because my London home was already a target, I did not believe that I was obliged to make my parents and my sister's home a target for harassment as well. I understand that millions of people have seen media coverage of this issue. I know that millions have endured awful hardship, including personal tragedies, over the past few months, and people are suffering every day. And I know the British people hate the idea of unfairness. I wanted to explain what I thought, what I did, and why over this period, because I think that people like me who helped to make the rules should be accountable for their actions. I'm happy to answer questions from the media who are here. Sorry, I've got, a, I've got a list, um, and uh, I was told to ask, to ask the people in this order. Laura. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Mr Cummings. Do you regret what you did? Because many people in this country have made heartbreaking sacrifices in the last couple of months in order to stick to the rules that you were part of putting together. 
and many people may have listened to you and think you made your own interpretation and do you understand for some people it seems as if there was one version of the rules for you and one version of the rules for everyone else. Um, thank you, Laura. Uh, no, I don't, I don't regret um, what, what I did. As I, as I said, I think um, you know, reasonable people may well disagree about how I thought about what to do in, 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 the, in, the, in these circumstances, but I think, that, I think that what I did was actually reasonable in these, uh, um, in these circumstances. Um, in terms of the rules, I think that the um, I think that the, you know, the rules make clear that if you're dealing with small children, then that could be that can be exceptional circumstances. And I think that the situation that I was in uh, was exceptional circumstances. And I think that the way that I dealt with it um, was the least risk to everybody concerned. If my wife and I had both been unable to look after our four-year-old. It may sound to many people this afternoon, though, that you're using a loophole that was in complete contrast to the message people heard day after day from number 10 of stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. Do you understand why some people are really angry about this, not just respectfully disagree, that they're furious? I, I, I certainly do. I mean, um, uh, you know, I've seen some of the media, obviously, over, over, over the last couple of days, and I'm not surprised that a lot of people are very angry and lots of people, I know, if... If you're, if you're someone sitting at home watching a lot of the media over the last um, uh, three days, then uh, I think lots of people would be very angry, and I completely uh, understand that. But I think, I hope, and think that today, when I've actually explained all of the circumstances about it, I think people will realise this was a very complicated, tricky situation, and I was trying to weigh up a lot of different things. Um, some people might have behaved differently in some ways. Uh, as I said, you know, Arguably, it was a mistake that I didn't call the Prime Minister on the Friday night, and I just did what I thought was the right thing to do, but I have to make decisions like that every day. And um, uh, yes, I understand that people um, uh, watching the media could, could be very upset about what's happened, but I th I th I've explained why. You don't want to offer any regret, any apology to people who didn't have the ability to make the decisions that you did, who didn't have the resources to do what you did? Um, as, uh, 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 as I said, I think, you know, I've obviously I've thought a lot about what I did that, that, uh, over this period, um, what things I could have done better uh, with this, what things I could have done better in general with the whole, in dealing with the whole crisis. Um, uh, there's definitely a lot of things that I could have done better over the last few months, but I think what I did regard in this 14 days, I think that um, I behaved reasonably. Is there anything else you'd like to ask? That's okay. Uh, Robert. Um, so, just to be absolutely clear, in this 14-day period and subsequently, apart from one visit to Durham and back, and a trip to Barnard Castle, neither you or Mary have been anywhere else at all. Also, millions of people haven't seen their parents for months now. Can you just tell us a bit more about the nature of your contact with your parents? And, th and then, finally, um, your own scientists are worried, they said this last night, that by introducing an element of personal discretion into the interpretation of the rules, you are putting lives at risk. What would you say to them and what would you say to us to reassure us? Thanks, Robert. Um, so I think uh, you asked whether it was true that, that, um, that over this 14 day period uh, um, that I didn't go, uh, that we didn't go um, anywhere else apart from, apart from uh, off in the car on day 15. That's, that, no, that's not correct. Apart from all the I went, to the yes, exactly. I went to the, there was the trip to hospital. Um, and then there was the drive on day 15, but, uh, but, but apart from that, um, neither of us left. And nothing since then either? Nothing since then in terms of? Just trips that break the rules, as it were? No, I mean, I left, I, th I mean, I'm not exactly sh sure where the boundaries of London are, but as far as I'm aware, the only time that I left London since um, Tuesday the 14th 
uh, was to go to Chequers for meetings with the Prime Minister. And that would be true of Mary as well, I mean, because you're, you're a household, you know. Uh, yes, I mean, Mary's been, Mary and I have been together since we've since, since we returned. Uh, and then on this issue of contact um, with your parents? Issue of contact with my parents. So, I mean, obviously, um, so, neither Mary nor I have been tested. So neither of us could be definitively sure about what our situation was. Mary had been ill and then recovered, but she hadn't had a cough, a fever. Um, I pretty clearly seemed to have COVID and talking to medical experts, they thought that, but I wasn't tested. But obviously our default mode was, assume that all three of us have got it. So I was in a cottage 50 meters or so away from everybody else. Uh, obviously we kept a very, very far away from them. Um, there are various reports that I've sort of that I visited them. I was staying with them. That's all completely untrue. My parents are in their 70s. Obviously, I did not want to give them um, this this disease, and so we stayed uh, we stayed very far away. We did have some conversations, but they were you know we're on a farm and there were shouted conversations at, at, at a distance. They weren't um, they weren't some of the things that have been reported. Um, in terms of in introducing a, que a question of, of discretion, I don't. So I'm not seeking to introduce any, anything or uh, any element of, uh, of discretion. To me, you know, the rules are there. They talk about what to do with, um, the, 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 they talk about exceptional circumstances and small children. Uh, I was trying to weigh up on that, on that Friday night, conflicting things between what happens if we're both ill, who's gonna look after him, what's the safest way of doing that, what if I, is there a way in which I might be able to go back to work the following week if the whole testing system changes, which was being discussed, but did not in fact happen? I was trying to weigh all of those things up. Given that, I think that um, I, do, I don't believe that I, that, 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 I, that I broke the rules. I think that- um, Breaking the rules, it's that the SBIP and SPIM members last night said that they think you introduced the idea that if your personal circumstances allow, you can do something different from what the simple rules say, and they are very worried that will make it much harder to contain the spread of the disease. Well, I think, I think, that, I think that they're right to be worried that, 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 the, that the coverage of the last couple of days could encourage people to behave in, in, in certain ways, but with great respect to, to them, they made those comments without knowing what, what had actually happened. Uh, and actually, that's one of the reasons why I think now um, uh, it would have been better to, to have made this statement earlier but as it as it was you know, well I didn't and it would have been better to have done it earlier for sure and that would have uh, also I think um, uh, stopped some of those guys being uh, themselves confused by what they read Beth Thank you. Um, Mr Cummins, thousands of people watching this, ordinary families, have put up with all kinds of restrictions and hardships, regardless of their medical or family requirements, people not going to funerals, people not even going into hospital when their kids have been having cancer treatment. Why are you so different? What those people, I think, see here is that there's one rule for you, one of the most powerful people in this country, and there's another rule for them. Don't you think you at the very least owe them an apology? Um, I, I don't think I'm so I don't think I'm so different and I don't think there's one rule for, for me and, and one rule for other people. Uh, 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 as I said, I think that um, I, I, I looked at the uh, I, I knew what the guidance was. Um, it talks about exceptional circumstances with, with small children. And I think that in all the circumstances, I behave reasonably and legally, as I, uh, as I said. But people will be listening to this. For days, government ministers have obfuscated about whether you went to Barnard Castle, no information put out. This is meant to be the people's government, isn't it? But you've badly misjudged public mood on this. This hasn't damaged the prime minister. It has undermined your policy and it's undermined public confidence in the government. It could even now threaten public health if people decide that the rules don't matter. How can you even countenance at the moment staying on and not resigning? Uh, well, uh, 
as I said, I think I think there is understandable anger, but a lot of that anger is based on uh, reports in the media that, that have not been true, and um, uh, it's extremely regrettable. But um, uh, the, the the media that were reporting some of these things that were wrong were told that they were wrong, but they reported them anyway. And that has caused a lot. Uh, that has caused a lot of anger. I know a lot of pe people have shouted at me in the street. Why did you go back? Why did you go back to see your parents just because you wanted to? But I did not do that. Okay, I'll just ask you one more thing. You went 260 miles. You didn't stop, but you didn't think that you ought to check with the prime minister, knowing how that might look when we were at the height of lockdown and we were all being told not to go anywhere and to stay at home and to self-isolate if we had COVID. I know you have circumstances, but how could you not even check with your boss? Um, well, as I said, I think, you know, th 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 that's a very reasonable question. And, and, and I think a lot, a lot of people would say that I, that I ought to have called the prime minister about it. But you know, all I can say, all, all, all I can say is what is 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 is, uh, is what I said earlier on about what my about what my state of mind was at the time. He he himself had just tested positive hours earlier. He was ill. He was upstairs in number ten in bed. He had a million things on his plate. We all had a million things on our plates. We were trying to do lots of things. Um, uh, one of the one of the things I have to decide every day is what to bother the prime minister with and what not to bother the prime minister with, and you know the the, the, the honest truth about my job is that there are endless problems all day long, and I can't go to him all day asking him what do you think about that with this what do you think about the other otherwise what's the point of having people like me around? I have to get on with things and I have to make make decisions and sometimes I make do the right thing and sometimes I, I make mistakes. I, I should stop now, but in retrospect, you wish you'd checked with him first. I don't know. Is the, is, the, is, is the honest truth about that particular thing? Maybe I should have done, but, you know, I have to protect his time. There are lots of really big issues that, that no, you know, the Prime Minister's time is just about the most valuable commodity that exists in, in, in the government, so you have to be very careful about what you go to him with and what you don't go to him with. And I have to make that judgment literally dozens of times a day. Um, and I made that judgment in a very short period of time in very extreme circumstances. And as I said, I mean, I thought at the time it was the right thing to do, but I also completely understand that people think it was a mistake and, I, and that, in fact, I should have spoken to him about it. Um, and as I said, I did actually speak to him about it a few days later, but neither of us can really remember exactly what I even said because we were both in pretty bad shape. Okay, thanks very much. Gary Gibbon. Yes, can I just be uh, clear about that? Yesterday you had a face-to-face -face conversation with the Prime Minister about all the circumstances around this trip and the, those key two or so weeks. But he'd known about your excursion north for about a month and a half. And he didn't ask you anything until yesterday. So, um, regarding the first part of your question, yes. I mean, essentially what I've just told you guys is what I told the Prime Minister yesterday. And I went through it all... Uh, yes, he asked me about it on, was it Friday night that the story broke, I think? I can't remember if it was Friday night or so Saturday morning. It was Saturday when the story broke he was interested. Saturday morning. It was when it was public he was the, interested. What, it was when it was public he was interested. He didn't ask you anything before that. Um, he just knew. So, as I said before, we, we, we spoke about it in the week after it happened. I can't remember what day, but in the, in the, in the, in the days following... Um, we were both in bed, ill. We had a few conversations on the phone. Been up since then. He knew for a long time. Well, so as I said, I spoke to him about it then. I told him about that. But to be honest, that was like the least of the things we were thinking. Like my movements were not part of our, really part of our conversation. We were talking about... The public health message the government's been putting out there. Do you, you, you say you don't we were, regret what we you've done. About, you think you acted correctly. We were correctly. talking about vaccines. We were talking about treatments. We were talking about, you know, hundreds of very important things we did not spend a lot of time talking about me and where i was and, and my own circumstances let me ask you about one of those very important things with tracing perhaps kicking off uh, in a big way in the coming weeks people will be asked to isolate the public health message will never have been more critical perhaps mm -hmm. 
Do you think public adherence to those instructions will be weaker or stronger as a result of your recent activities? Well, I, 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 hope, I hope it won't affect it, and I, and I hope that, um, that now that people know what actually happened and that some of the false stories that have all been circulating and driving a lot of people understandably mad and, and, uh, 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 about it, then I hope that people will realise. You've stood up the central story in this allegation that you drove a very long way from home when everyone was told to be at home. If there was more leeway in these instructions than we thought, why didn't you tell everyone about that? Well, the, the, uh, well, with, with, with great respect, Gary... Who else has driven that distance? You, I'm, I'm trying to answer the, the question. With, with great respect, it's not just a simple matter in the regulations. The regulations describe various ex exceptional circumstances where it may not be possible to follow the rules. It doesn't say you must stay at home in all circumstances. It says that there are some circumstances in which you won't be able to, to follow these rules. And it seemed to me that I was in such an exceptional circumstance and I was trying to judge, balance all of these very complicated things. People will be staggered to hear you say that when the message was so clear, stay home. Is the fact that the Prime Minister well, can't do his job without you? The, the guidance says, if you are living with children, I'm reading out the actual guidance, if you're living with children, keep following this advice to the best of your ability. However, we are aware that not all these measures will be possible. What we have seen so far is the children with corona appear to be less severely affected. It's nevertheless important to do your best to follow this guidance. Now, you know, it, uh, and, and, and you know as well as I do that, that, that there are, um, that the, the deputy chief medical officer has discussed this, there's been various discussion about it. If you've got small children, if you've got a child that's four years old and neither of you can look after him, the guidance doesn't say you've just got to sit there. So I think I, as I've said, I think I think I behave reasonably um, in all of these circumstances, given all these the circumstances and the different things I have to try and weigh up. Jason Groves. Hi, um, you blame the media uh, for this mess that you've got the government into. Do, do you accept that you've, whatever legal nicety you may have to say that you haven't broken the letter of these regulations, you've driven a coach and horses through the spirit of them and that that is why people are so cross about it? I don't agree. I think that that's not... You don't agree? No, I don't, I don't agree. So let, I let's, think, let, well, I let, think, let's go I think, through it, shall we? I mean, you, you, you left London with your wife, who had coronavirus symptoms, completely against the regulations. You're up in Durham, and you decide to go for a drive on a weekend when, a few yards from here, the Foreign Secretary that weekend was telling us to stay at home and save lives. You went for a drive, you sat by a river, you went for a walk in the wood. I mean, you, you may or may not have a way of justifying this to yourself, and possibly there may be some legal loophole, but you've broken the spirit of it, haven't you? No, I don't think that I, that I have. Um, just, ju just to correct one, one thing, when we left, my wife did not have a cough. She did not have a fever. Those are the two symptoms that were, were, were mentioned. She was ill. She'd thrown up. Um, but we didn't, as I said before, we didn't know whether or not she had COVID or not. Um, secondly, secondly, s secondly as, I, as, I, as I said earlier on, the, the 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 walk in the woods was on was on private land. I didn't leave our property to go for a walk in the woods, and that's that's perfectly reasonable behaviour. You stopped on the way back from Castle Barnard. Yeah, I was driving. I was driving back from 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 Barnard Castle, uh, um, and my child, the four-year-old, was in the car seat in the back. He said, "Dad, I need to go to the toilet." We pulled into the side of the road. He jumped out with my wife. I don't. Th I don't think any reasonable person would say that that that, that, that I behaved that, that, that that's bad behaviour. No, you've plainly had a tough time. I don't think anyone would argue with that. But there's lots of other people who've had a tough time. I, I, I mean, I'd like to finish by we we had a letter today from Andrew and Sarah in Wiltshire. Uh, their daughter in, and son-in-law live ten miles from them, and they've got two children. They came down with COVID and they said, imagine our frustration living so near and yet not being able to, being able to help. It was a big sacrifice that we made. 
and they feel like mugs now. I mean, they, they want you to resign. D did you offer to resign when you saw the Prime Minister? No, I have not offered to resign. Um, did you ever consider it? it no, I, did not, I have not considered it. Um, as, I, as I said, I think, uh, you know, I, th I think it's reasonable to say um, that other people would have behaved differently uh, in different ways in, the, in this whole situation. But as I stress, I was trying to balance lots of, lots of competing things. I mean, if I hadn't worked here, for example, then very, you could very easily say that, OK, I could just have stayed in, in an isolated cottage for, for weeks afterwards. But I was involved in lots of things involving you know, crucial questions of vaccines, trying to get scientists involved in the effort, trying to get money moved, trying to get regulations moved out of the way. And I thought, I thought that if I could return to work, then I should seek to return to work. And I would stress that I took expert medical advice before I moved to, to, to say, you know, and I actually went through the whole history, the, the, the details of what I've just told you. I went through on the Saturday, the 11th, on day 15. And it, sorry, is that day 14 or 15? I can't remember now, whatever. But anyway, it's, it's day, f day 14. And so, so yeah, Saturday, Saturday the, the 11th. On day 14 is when I took, took medical advice. That's day 14 of symptoms. And I was told then that you're clear to, I, I said, can I go back to work Monday, Tuesday? And I was told, yes, given that what you've explained, you are not a danger to the public now and you can safely go back to work and hire childcare. So given that, I thought that I ought to try and go back to work and try and do what I could in this emergency. Okay, thanks. Um, Anna Mikhailova. Mr Cummings, how many miles is it from your house, the house you were staying in in Durham and Barnard Castle, where you went? Uh, I don't know how many miles it is. I mean, it's, it's roughly a half hour drive. Right. So there are people without gardens, never mind access to private land and woodland, who haven't made unnecessary car journeys like that for more than two months now. They've been following rules that you helped forge and create. So. Were the public stupid for, to follow these rules to the letter, rather than looking for loopholes like you did? Um, no, of course the public were not stupid to, 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 to follow the rules, and I wasn't looking for loopholes. I was looking to try to do the best that I could in a complex situation where I was trying to weigh safety of my child with trying to get back to work and a lot of difficult decisions to make around that. How does your trip to Barnard Castle have anything to do with the safety of your child or your work? Because, as, 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 as I explained, I'd been very ill. On the Sunday, the 12th, I'd said to my wife, right, let's pack up the car and go back. Um, uh, you know, I'd been cleared by the doctors to go back to work. And, and she said, and I, and I think it was perfectly reasonable, um, you know, a few days ago you could barely stand up. You said that your eyesight was weird and it seemed to be weird. We shouldn't just embark on a 270, whatever it is, mile journey and then end up finding halfway through that you actually can't drive that far. So, you know, we should, we should get in the car and make sure and see if you can actually drive. The only way to avoid this problem would have been just to say, well, I'm just going to stay in Durham, which I could have done, but I didn't think was the right thing to do. So it was, you know, the, the, one has to make the, 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 the I've been told by by, by, by expert medical advice that um, I wasn't a danger to the public and that I could go back to work in number 10 Downing Street on the Monday, Tuesday and therefore I was trying to do that in the, in the safest way possible and I think that that was a reasonable thing to do. But that doesn't make any sense. Why do you have to make a half hour journey each way to Barnard Castle? Why not drive a little bit of the way to London and then go back if you weren't feeling well? I mean, to be, I mean, we didn't think about that, of, of doing that, to be, to, to be honest. We just, we just thought, OK, let's whiz down the road and see how I feel. Do you regret not thinking about it? Um, do, you mean, do I regret not just trying to drive to London and see if I can do it? Do you regret taking a half-hour journey to Barnard Castle and sitting for 15 minutes, as you say? 
Um, as I said, I think it was a reasonable thing to do. I mean, perhaps you're right, and we should just have cracked on and tried to do the whole trip, and then, and then. To, but, but, but the whole point was, now I had been, I had been extremely ill. My vision had been a bit weird. We were all going to go back. My wife said, we should, we should drive down the road, and you should see if you can actually drive and see if your vision is weird or, or if you're okay. And I thought that's a good idea. I should do. And as I stress, I've been cleared to go back to work. So it w the implication that I shouldn't have been driving back to London, I don't, th I don't think is reasonable because I had spoken to a doctor about it and I had been cleared to come back to work. If um, you mention your wife a lot, um, if you and your wife felt that you had done nothing wrong, why did both your articles in, in The Spectator from a few weeks ago make absolutely no mention of being in Durham? Because, as, uh, as I said, my, my house in London was already and is now the subject of, um, of some very unpleasant actions. And why on earth would I mention another house that I was in where I've got two elderly parents and, and other relatives living there who now today also have a lot of unpleasant things going on around their house too? I don't think I was obliged to do that. Why write such a detailed article at all? My wife's a writer. I mean, so I don't tell her what to do. You did too. What, sorry? Well, you wrote one too. You're not a writer. I wrote, I wrote a few sentences about, about her, about, um, about what it was like to be with Mary. Um, Nicola. Thank you, Mr Cummings. Um, you said that you sought expert medical advice before returning to London from Durham. Yes. Did you seek any such advice before making the initial trip um, to Durham? Uh, no, I didn't. And were you confident, or how could you be confident, that you wouldn't be putting anybody else at risk by making that, that trip? So the, the, point, the, the point was that, um, that I knew that I could get to a place that was completely isolated. I knew that I had a full tank of petrol, I could drive to a place where, that was completely isolated from, every, from everybody else. I knew that uh, if me and my wife could not look after our small child, there was a 17-year-old and a 20-year-old 50 metres away that I could call and say, we need help. They are old enough to look after a child and, and also young enough to be in the least uh, uh, risk category. If I'd stayed in London and a similar thing had, had happened, then I'd have had to get somebody else there and expose them to, 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 to danger um, or invite them into the house, which would also have exposed them to danger. The way that I did it seemed to me to be the safest thing for everybody in the, circum in the circumstances. And in fact, as it turned out, I didn't have to put anybody in that house in danger because, um, because although we were both ill and I couldn't look after a four-year-old, my wife could. So I th as, I, as I stressed, I think that in all the circumstances, it was the, it was the, the most sensible thing to do. You, you mentioned you had a full tank of petrol when you left. Did you then have to fill up before you came back? Was that another stop no, that you made? I, I, uh, no, we drove up and then we went back and then I'm pretty sure we called in and filled up with petrol on the way back. But remember, at this, at this, at this point, um, I'd been cleared to drive back to work, and so I, I don't think in any in any in any way that that was breaking the rules. I think it's just important to be clear exactly how many stops you've made because you've disputed some of the accounts that have been reported. Yeah. So um, on the way up, I didn't I didn't stop at all, and then on the way down, I can't be entirely sure, but I'm like 95% sure that I that I did stop on the way back down and filled up with petrol. But that, but that might be that might be wrong. Right. Um, you said in, in in the statement you read out that you tried to exercise your judgment in yeah. doing the best thing for your family. Um, you know, people up and down the country have been trying to do the best for their families. Yes. You talked about complicated circumstances. So many people have those. They have competing caring needs for children, for elderly people. Most people that me and and my colleagues here have spoken to did not think what you did was within the rules, regardless of whether they had the opportunity to make such a journey. You know, there are single parents who have had COVID-19 and had to care for, you know, even younger children than you. 
because that's the situation they found themselves in and they were following the advice issued from this building. How can you not feel apologetic towards them for undermining the rules that you helped to create? Well, obviously, I feel um, extreme sympathy for, for single mums who'd have been in, 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 su in such a terrible situation. Um, but all I can do is all I can do is repeat is repeat what I said before. On that on that evening, my wife had, re had just been in a situation where she felt barely able to look after our child. I'd been was essentially surrounded by people who um, uh, were testing were, were either testing positive or had symptoms for for COVID. It seemed perfectly likely that 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 um that i would have it and could not look after a child and in fact that is exactly what happened the next day i was ill and i got extremely ill a couple of days later and i couldn't look after a child i could barely i could barely move to be honest and if both of us had been in that situation then I, we would have needed help and 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 in in, in in that scenario what would have been best for, for for everybody would it have been best for a 17 year old niece to walk 50 meters and look after our child or would it have been best for me to be here and and you know, calling 999 i think that i think that what i did was the most reasonable thing in the circumstances given that my that my nieces and my sister had, had very kindly said that if there is an emergency we'll help and just finally before you made the decision to drive up to durham yeah. did you make any inquiries with with neighbors or friends to see if they or any other people in london who may have been able to help you should you have needed help with your, looking after your son i didn't know because because as i said any, anything like that would have doing that would well first of all I don't think it would be reasonable for me to ask someone, you know, some friend to come and expose themselves to a deadly disease when a 17 year old niece has already volunteered to do it for me. So to be honest, I didn't really think about that. I thought, well, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm lucky if this nightmare does happen, then that's the best thing for everybody. Thank you. Nicola. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Matt. Hi. Uh, why, do, why weren't you honest uh, with the public before now and before Friday about your trip to Durham? Uh, in what way was I not honest? Why didn't you tell us? We were asking daily at the number 10 briefing, what, you know, where were you, where were you work, working? I think a lot of people would have understood your, um, your, your difficulties at the time. Why, why weren't you honest about that? Well, look, you know, there's been there, there's been a long string of uh, of inaccurate stories about me um, for month after month after month, and the truth is that answering a lot of these things does not necessarily clear up confusion. It frequently has led to more confusion. So you weren't worried that you admitting and being honest to the public that you were travelling to Durham for very understandable circumstances could have sent out the wrong message to other families. That wasn't yeah, I was worried. I was really worried about the whole thing. But in the situation that, the, you know, not just the situation that was 14 days, but in the, in the time since Friday night, there are not really any good options. And do you regret not laying out quite clearly, maybe when you came back to avoid the security problems, just being honest with the public? Yes, as I, uh, yeah, I do. As, as, as I said, I think at the beginning of my statement, I think, I think in retrospect, um, it would have been better to, to, it would have been better to set this out early, uh, earlier on. Um, but you know, we have to make judgments about these things in, in, in number ten. Our judgment at the time was that if we start trying to explain everything, then it will it'll actually lead to more confusion. That often happens around here. Um, but now, you know, there's been all of these reports about, did I go back a second time? Did I go back on the 19th of May? Was there a third visit? Um, and by this morning, there's just, there seemed to be so much confusion about so many things that the Prime Minister, I and others thought, okay, the best thing to do now is just, like, the only thing to do now is to actually just come out and, 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 um, and discuss it all and to talk and just to lay the whole thing out, including uh, my child being ill and all of that stuff. Regardless of whose fault it is, I mean, this whole episode is already having an impact on people's behaviour. Government scientists are warning more people will die 
the police warning that it's going to make their job harder. I mean, regardless of whose fault it is, why shouldn't you resign and, and draw a line, line under it and hope to regain the government's control of this pandemic? Well, I hope I hope that I hope that that, that now that people have heard what happened, I th I think that as I, as I've stressed that, that that in a very complicated situation, I behave reasonably and I tried to do the thing which minimised risks to everybody, given all the different things I I, I, I had to weigh up, and I hope that. Uh, having heard this, that um, the the people will will say, okay, no, we understand we, we understand the situation and uh, we understand why I did. They may well say, I would have. You know, some people, I'm sure, would will, will think I would have done this differently or or that differently. Um, and you know, perhaps they're right. Uh, I, I'm I'm not say, I'm not saying that. Having laid all of this out, I'm not saying I know I'm right. I'm saying, this is what I did at the time. This is why I did it at the time. I was trying to weigh up competing things. I thought that I should try and come back to work and help with the whole disaster if I could do. Um, other people may say that I shouldn't. I shouldn't have done that. So, if the episode does rumble on, do you think it, you, know, you will re review your position in the oh, next sorry? week? Will you review your position in a week or so if it does rumble on? It keeps distracting. It's up, to the, it's up to the prime minister, you know. I came. I, I, I'm here. To, I'm here to try. I'm here to try and do the best. The, the, the best that I can to, to for, for the government. Um, to try and change the country for the better in, in in lots of ways. To get more investment into the NHS. To do all sorts of things that that, that we've talked about um, during this crisis. I've been trying to do the best I can to um, to make the government machine work. Uh, uh, as well as possible. If the Prime Minister thinks that I should stop, then that, you know that's not for me to decide, it's up to him to decide. Just very quickly, you, you said a lot of things you wish you'd done better yourself and as a government. What, you know, broadly, what areas do you wish you had done better over this pandemic? Um, I, think it's, I think it's better, as I said at the start, it's not for me here to answer all the, government, all the questions about government policy over all of this. I think the Prime, that's a job for the Prime Minister and he'll be giving a press conference late, later on. All, all I, uh, what I was saying was, um, you know, I, I know that I've made mistakes in dealing in dealing with the, this thing going right going right back to January. Um, I think that my behaviour between in these fourteen days, I think when when people hear everything that happened, I hope that people will agree that it was it was it was reasonable. They might not think that they'd have done the same thing. But I hope that people will agree that, that, that it was reasonable calculations in all the circumstances. Um, uh, and I don't think what I did in these 14 days was a mistake, but I certainly made a lot of other mistakes, and I make mistakes every day. Um, Caitlin. Uh, thank you. You've already said, Mr Cummings, that um, there was an available empty property um, at your parents' farm. It may not be a second home, which um, to which travel was explicitly banned in the regulations, but it is certainly a privileged position. Is, does your story not make it the case that it's one rule for most of us and another rule for everybody else who can bend it slightly because they've got the luxury of an empty house lying around? No, as I've said, I don't think that's... I don't think that's the case. The reason why I went to that place was it seemed like the safest option given the considerations and, and I was weighing up what's the safest thing for my child, what's the safest thing in terms of how could I get back to work and try to help with this with this emergency, what's the safest thing in terms of the whole um, the, the problems with my uh, current house and I was having to weigh, weigh all of these things up and make a decision in a very short period of time. But lots of people would have liked to weigh up what the safest option was for their child and would have liked to have thought that they had the opportunity to go to an empty, safe space. Did you not at all have any thought that, you know, I should be, I should be going through this in the same way that everybody else is? You know, I should be staying at home and doing everything that I can. Um, I mean, obviously I thought, well, I, I, I'm not sure that I can really usefully add, add to, what, to, to what I've already said. I think I've explained what my thought process was. I was trying to balance these, the, the, these three things about the safety to my child. And I, I stressed the point about it wasn't that it was some nice place 
to be. If you've been there, you'd see that it's sort of um, it's sort of concrete blocks. It, it's the point about it was it was not that it was a nice place to be, but that it was the safest place to be in the circumstances, and it meant that I didn't have to expose other people to risk unless I absolutely had to in a critical emergency. And I thought that the, that the regulations, um, uh, as I stress, the regulations say, we are aware that not all these measures will be possible if you're living with children. And I had a, w a wife who'd already said, you know, she was close to not being able to look after a child. I was thinking, this might be me tomorrow. In fact, it was me tomorrow. What do I do then? And I think, you know, if, if, if you imagine what, what, what this situation, if both of us had been uh, unable to look after him, then the way that I organised it was the way in which the smallest risk to the smallest number of people was, was, was actually going on. And given that and the other things I was also thinking about, I think it was a reasonable thing to do. But as I stress, I can understand that, that, that some people might say, uh, you know, it's your, you know, it's your own fault if people are making threats at your house. That's not a good reason to leave. We've all had to stay, at, you know, other people are going to make their own their own judgments about 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 this whole thing. Um, I don't think there's much more I can say. You also just mentioned in answer to Matt's question that you have made other mistakes um, in dealing with the pandemic since January. Can you point us towards any more of them? As I stressed, I think that's. That, I mean, I, at some point in the future, I'll be very happy to go through all the different things that I think I that I think I got wrong. Um, I would also point out though that lots of the media reports about what I've thought, what I've said, what I've done are completely false. Um, for many years I've been writing about the dangers of pandemics. Only last year I wrote explicitly about the danger of coronaviruses. Uh, I stressed that um, the importance of government planning uh, and that I was worried that people were not taking it seriously enough. And um, a lot of media reports are trying to claim that I sort of brushed it off and, uh, and, and, and sort, of, uh, sort of didn't realise what a danger it was. And, and I think um, no reasonable person could come to that conclusion if you look at what I've said and what I've written over the last few years. I took it extremely seriously. I took it extremely seriously many years ago and I urged other people to take it extremely seriously. But I have made other mistakes in terms of how I've, in, in terms of how I've um, dealt with things in, 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 since January for sure. Is one of those mistakes herd immunity? Is one, mistake, what, is one of those mistakes the idea of herd immunity? No, it's not, and a lot of the things that, that have been written about that are completely are completely wrong. Uh, one final one from me. Um, what is your message from Conservative voters who voted this government in less than six months ago, a lot of them for the first time in the North East around Durham, who want you out of Downing Street and want you out of this government? Um, What's my message to them? Well, I think I've made mistakes in how I've dealt with this, uh, the, 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 uh, all sorts of things in government. I don't think I made a mistake about these, last, about these 14 days that, 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 that are in question. And I would um, urge to, uh, uh, I would stress to people that they should not believe everything they read in the newspapers or everything they see on TV because lots of the things that are reported are not in fact, are not in fact the case. Um, I hope that I've set out today what the actual facts of it are, and I hope that people will, will think that, that, that uh, even if they disagree with me, that I behave reasonably in, the, in these circumstances. Thank you. Would anybody else like to ask any, any questions? Sure thing, Anna. Well, um, after recovering from this um, disease, uh, my, my job is one of the jobs that the rules say you should go back to work if you can do. And well, with, with, with respect, I think, I, I, I think it's, it, it's very relevant because I was, I, I, I was allowed to drive back to London and go back to work. 
So. Yeah. Then you went, you didn't just go for a drive, per se. You went to a beautiful nature spot, you sat outside, and you spoke to the desert. Well, I think that, the, 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 to be honest, the, the state that everyone was in, the, the, it, this was nothing to do with a, be a beauty spot. And, and contrary to lots of the reports, I wasn't sightseeing, I did not go to the castle, I wasn't walking around. Um, there are lots of things that are being said about this that, that are not true. We, uh, we just. Went for went for a test drive, drove east, east south, um, uh, and ended up pulling in by the side of the road by a river on the outskirts of town. And my wife and I discussed it and said, "Okay, you can drive. This feels safe. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go back. And tomorrow we'll pack the car up and, and, and go back to work." As I, as I say, I was, I, I was entitled to go back to work, I was encouraged to go back to work, and I think going back to work was the right thing for me to do. But I think it's also reasonable to, to try and do it safely for me, and for, for, for the family that I'm driving, for everybody else on the road as well. I mean, but isn't Anna's Robert. Fun, but isn't Anna's fundamental point that this is not really about legality, it is about the extent to which all of us can exercise personal judgment about how to implement the rules. Um, you know, I tell you everything none of your surveillance scientists, and they are very very worried at this critical juncture that what you have done by your example is the same critical. If you feel that there are special circumstances, you don't have to follow the rules. So for example, quite soon, quite soon, um, you know, Many of us are going to be getting a telephone call from a contact tracer saying you have been in contact with somebody who's got symptoms, stay at home for 14 days. And many people say, ah, oh, I'm absolutely certain I haven't got any symptoms. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if I don't go to work, I'm not going to earn money, my family is going to be put at risk. I'm just going to follow my own judgment. Now, I've got people do that. Contact tracing is not going to stop the spread of the virus. Mm -hmm. So, the, yes, it's true that various scientists have said, oh, well, we think that what Mr. Cummings did might, might cause problems. But I would stress that a lot of the things which they think I did, I did not do. But you there have been, you did there have been, it. yes, but, but with res great respect, Robert, you are allowed to exercise judgment. The rules explicitly say that, as I, as, as I stressed to you before, the rules explicitly say that when you're living with small children, uh, uh, you have to exercise your judgment in that situation. That's what the rules say. There's that, the, rules, the rules are not millions of pages long explaining exactly what you do in every possible circumstance. And if we try to write rules like that, then they, they, could, uh, they could easily cause more trouble rather than less trouble. So of course people have to make judgments about, about these things. Um, uh, you know, some of the people who've said that what I did is encouraging people to, do, to, to behave badly are doing so thinking that, um, that, as per various media reports, that I went to stay with my parents. I did not in any meaningful sense stay with my parents. I was not in the same house with my parents. I never went into the same house as my parents. It's not true to say I went to visit with my parents. It's not true to say that my parents helped me with childcare. All of these things have been reported. It's th that is not the case. That is not what happened. may say, well, I'm going to ignore the isolation because it's going to cost me money and put, put my family at risk. Well, with, with respect, that, those situa that, that situation does not apply to me, and that's, no. not, and that's not what I was saying. No, it's not, it doesn't apply to you. What I'm saying is by the moment you introduce an element of, I've got to protect my family, the risks become that less clear and obvious. But as I stress, Robert, with, 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 with great respect, I am not introducing an element of discretion or judgment. The rules necessitate that you, ex that you exercise judgment. If you look at the actual official rules on the NHS um, website, you can't do anything but exercise judgment in these circumstances with a small child. It doesn't go into lots of different circumstances and say what to do. There is no regulation covering the situation that I found myself in on Friday night. I had to exercise judgment about what to do, weighing up all of these different things.
okay thank you very much everybody take care